In today's video, I am joined by Dem, who is the head of community for Azuki. We're going to discuss the current state of Azuki. We're going to hear his thoughts as to how he thinks the NFT market is going. And we're just going to have an overall chat, and I think you guys are really going to like it. This video is sponsored by my agency, which is Syntax Studios. If you're looking for a smart contract, collabs, help with marketing, advising, anything like that. Also, if you're looking for an alpha group to join, make sure to check out Canto Labs, which is my alpha group. The links are going to be down below. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview with them. What's going on, guys? So today in this video, I have the absolute pleasure to speak with the head of community for Azuki. His name is Dem Azuki on Twitter. I'll make sure to drop his link down below. But today we're going to talk about Azuki, which is, as everybody knows, one of the top NFT projects, one of the best communities in the NFT space. And so, Dem, it's great to have you on. I'd absolutely love to to hear you give like an intro about you, like how you got here, um, what you do with the Zuki, and then we can just get into to everything else. But once again, like awesome to have you. Thanks for having me, Ash, and thanks for that intro. I've cracked up with your videos so many times. <laughs> I gotta let you know that. Uh, I, I love your content. The, the Grifter video is just so funny. Um, so it's exciting to be out here talking about Azuki. I'm, I'm the head of community at Azuki, as you mentioned. I'm also a product manager. I come from a background of big tech, Google, and before that, Amazon. I met uh, Sagabon uh, in Google at, in 2017, so that's sort of how I got connected to the Azuki crew. And I've been with Azuki since we started. So uh, I'm the person that speaks on the spaces, that jumps in on one-on-one -on -one with the community. I'm mixing it up with the seals. I'm mixing it up with the shit posters and just trying to have fun, um, but also really hear from our community what they want and try to bring it into the products that we build. So I love my job. I get to be on Twitter all day and uh, it's great to be here to talk a little about Azuki a little bit, yeah. Yeah, man, people would love to get paid to be on Twitter all day and that's your job. <laughs> You must love that. I can't complain. You'll never hear me complain. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. Yeah, so um, that's it's very interesting to hear that like you've you've known Zagabon for so long. So how how did this come about, right? So like you've known him for a while, and and that's been a thing. But like how how did you guys like land on Azuki, and then how did it turn into what it is? Like I know that's like kind of loaded, but. Um, but yeah, like how did like all of this just get started? I think the reason why I came on board and I quit my job at Google is easy. Saga in 2017 told me to buy Ethereum at $47. I was like, nah, no way. Then he told me to buy Ethereum at $120. I was like, no way, man. Then, then he quit Google. But then I saw Ethereum go up and I was like, this is the last time I'm fading this man. Like the next time he comes <laughs> to me convinced of doing something, I'm going all in. So when he came to me with Azuki, I was like, I, I mean, my job was to set up the Discord and just hang out in the community. Like, that's not what I was doing at Google. I was a product manager there. So I was like, I don't care. I'm going to change roles. I'll do whatever you guys want. Like, I'm just jumping into this thing. I think for them, um, for Saga and for Steam Boy, they wanted to create a very deep universe with a lot of characters where everybody could feel like they're part of the story and that they're heroes as well. So Steam Boy is the artist. He created all the characters behind Overwatch. I think also Saga is a big believer in decentralization. And a lot of the drive behind Azuki was to create a brand that would make you proud of being part of decentralization, that like you could rock it and you could show to people that you were with the values of the space, that you were with the values of decentralization, but that it wasn't but that it was cool, like that it was part of culture, that it was tied to places that uh, were relatable. And so, you know, I think, I think it was designed to make people feel proud of being uh, in Web3 and make people feel proud of uh, messing around with NFTs because the brand had that sort of worldwide recognition for it. So it's an ambitious, very ambitious project with a lot of storytelling and with a lot of brand building ahead of us. For sure. Yeah. And like, that's great info to know. Uh, I, I know a lot of people talk about like decentralization and everything. And I, uh, and I, and I totally get it. That's like one of the main things that like really push people forward. But like, you also got to admit, like the art is pretty sweet. Like I have always said that Azuki was like the best anime art. It just has like the best style. I actually minted two Azukis. Like I know we've, we've spoken about that before, but, um, like I, I remember sitting on my computer minting them and I was just like, this is the one that I want to hold for a while. And I did like, I, I held them through reveal, like for a pretty long time. 
and this was like during the bull days so it was still at a point where like once they got to 10 eth i was just like oh shit like i did mint these like for for one eth each like i need to <laughs> like i'm gonna need to like take some of these off the table but take um, profits take profits yeah but like with that being said it, it just it goes to show that there's been a lot of other anime projects quote like you know art that have come out they've launched and and they haven't seen nearly as much success now of course like that's not all attributed to the art but i also think that that's one thing that like a lot of people really love about the project yeah the amount of time that steam boy and the founders and and all of us in the early team spent looking at every single azuki and regenerating it and looking at the floors and looking at the mid tiers and looking at you know it's just the amount of time that we invested into the art really speaks to how much steam boy cares about the art that he puts out and you know this man has made some of the most memorable characters like i said from overwatch you know so he he was early on there to create all those characters so he knows how to build a character that feels like a hero and that you can relate to um but i think overall as a team we're very intentional and i think we came into the space with a very clear idea of what we wanted to achieve the open source protocols we wanted to drop the quality of clothing that we wanted to make for our community, how good we wanted the art to be. And it's been really exciting to see people react to that and that compromise to quality and that sort of um, dedication to good delivery. It's, it's been great to see people react to that in a positive light because we were very clear about what we wanted to achieve when we when we came here. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm with you with that. And and with that being said, um, what's like the, the overall state of Azuki, right? So obviously, beans dropped a while ago i know that there has been a new take on content which we're going to get into like a little bit later but there were teasers about like you know the new world and everything on um on the website and on twitter so like overall like what's like the current state of azuki like how are you feeling about it um how's the community doing and and i know that you said that you weren't going to leak like any alpha but like just from like a, a public situation, like where, you know, like just like the regular stuff that's out there. Um, how are you feeling about like everything that's been going on? I think we've had a, a year and a half since, since we opened up the discord of really consistent quality delivery. We delivered on the things that we wanted to deliver and, and we're happy with the work that we've put in. And I think we've shown a lot of what the brand stands for. Um, we've been able to drop a couple of open source protocols like ERC721A and PBT.io that are very widely used. We've been able to collaborate with really strong brands like Formula One, uh, Ambush, among others. And we've been able to also show people really deep storytelling through our world drops, um, through the Golden Skateboard auction. I think all of those things make us really proud of where we are. It's a difficult time for the market. A lot of people have left the space, and it's it's been you know it's been tough for people that um, held since the bull since the bull days and and those floor prices that were so high. But also at the, at the same time, I think we're at a stage where our community is really strong. It's a group of very tight knit people with a very good mid term to long term commitment to the brand, and so we feel like we have a lot of support. We also, to be honest. Feel like we're fighting as an underdog i think um you know there were there were some events in june and and in, and in july that really kind of started a conversation about our founder and and his past projects and that ended up with a lot of people distrusting our brand and, and saying very negative things about us and i think that led us to a mindset where we think that we have to prove ourselves in the space and so we continue to deliver really high quality stuff and we continue to work really hard because we want everybody that's stuck with azuki and that has been part of the garden for long to feel really proud uh, that they're part of this brand and they're part of this journey with us. Yeah, I remember all of that. And what's awesome to see is that it's pretty much been up only from there, right? Like, I mean, I don't know if you feel that way. I'm not talking about just like floor price, even though that is kind of the case as well. But people have really gravitated towards Azuki since that point um people always i mean from the from mint like people were really into the project um i know that that was like a bump in the road but i think that a lot of other teams would have stumbled or or like fallen into i don't know what you would say like you know falling into like you know just all the noise and bs 
but that didn't happen with you guys, at least from like what I can tell. And I'm sure it was difficult from like a team perspective, but, um, but yeah. yeah, we understood that we had a very strong community that was committed to us and that they deserved only our best. And so there was a question asked of Saga on the discord. They asked him like, Hey, are you going to step down? And his answer right away was, I'm going to step up. And we all felt that we really felt it deeply. Like we're going to fight for the people that are here right now. And we're going to give them the comeback story that they deserve. We're going to give them sort of like that return and, and that value that, that they deserve. And I think we're very proud of being able to deliver some of that. I think we have so much more in store. We have a really exciting year ahead. Um, we have a really strong plan. And I think the things that we're going to deliver um, are going to sort of rise to meet the high bar that we have for quality. But it's always been about this group of people that believe in us, that that core community, and being able to deliver for them is very rewarding. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good good take. He says, "No, I'm gonna step up." No, I actually, yeah, he I, just talks like that. He's just yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of crazy about them, and he just talks in bars. <laughs> yeah, he talks like a soup, like a movie and a superhero, like a super. Yeah, you know what I mean? Bit, like yeah. a superhero. He's like, "No, I'm gonna." No, I, I actually I like that a lot, and I mean, if I heard that from a founder. Like, I know that in a discord that might be crazy. A lot of people would probably be like, yeah, whatever. But like, I can imagine that if you were really down for it, you heard something like that. Like, I would have been like, let's fucking go. <laughs> like, I'm down for it. You know, um, I mean, the great thing is to be able to deliver actions that match up to those words, you know, because talk is cheap. And so anybody can, you know, anybody can say something like that and it sound really epic. But then you know, you put your head down and for eight, 10 months, you really get to delivering and, 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 you know, doing really great work. I think actions speak louder than words was something that we took inside our core values. And I think we we're still, we're still on that. Like we still want to deliver things that speak a lot louder than anything that we can say, like, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing this video with you and I'm talking a lot, but uh, I'm talking a lot because I think we've been delivering for a year and a half. And so I can now look back at the stuff that we did and be like, Hey, I think I can back up that talk with a lot of the stuff that we've delivered and how good it is. So with that all being said, why do you think that Azuki has been having so much success? It's the strongest community I've ever seen, not going to lie. And it's a word that gets tossed around and gets used a lot in the space. But I, I really believe that the people that are behind Azuki um, are attracting the right kind of people to join our community so they're attracting it the kind of like new people that we want but they're also they just have the right they have the right mindset and, and they're able to look through the noise and the words and see the content and see the delivery and they're able to like hold strong and have fun and believe in what they believe in so community has been huge and i think because that community has trusted us you know they trusted the process we've been able to deliver for them consistently we have this compromise to dope shit only. And when you combine a really strong community that trusts us on a team that really is committed to high quality stuff, um, you get something really magical. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize there's a lot of people that still doubt us. And I think that'll always be there. But a lot of people are starting to, to realize and we're starting to get a lot of new people joining the community as well who are very exciting. So I think it's a combination of those two things. And, uh, you know, I think it's a combination that we can rely on in the future as well. So you mentioned like the community is so strong. Like you have a lot of projects that launch and they're just like, you know, we want to build a community and everything and they are unable to like really do it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like there are some communities that are strong. A lot of this comes down to leadership, right? Like the thing is, is that I would argue that a lot of the people that have been going out and launching projects are not true leaders. So they don't really know how to like bring a group of people together to then try to work towards like a greater mission. And that's something that like I studied a lot. Like I've been in leadership positions like throughout my life. So it's like, I've been in that spot where it's like, you're, you're a leader and you have a lot of people that like join up on your cause. And then it's up to you to push that forward. And so I think that a good community comes from good leadership. And you mentioned, you said like, oh, well, the community is like the strongest. Like, how did that happen? Because everybody that is in the space, like they talk about it and they preach it. But like a lot of these people don't really know how to actually build a community, especially in an area like Web3, where it's like, you know, you got me who's like, you know, I'm in the United States. You got other people who are in England and then whatever, like, you know, all over the world. And, and it's like, for what it's worth, it's a lot harder to build a community, in my opinion, at least, like 
on the well maybe that not that might not be the case anymore but like i feel like it's very hard to build a community on the internet um what's your thought on like all that yeah i mean it's 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 funny that you mentioned this because i'm the head of community so i, I should be bragging about like all the big brain stuff that we do on the community <laughs> building uh however it is my true belief that you need to have a great product you need to have the trust from people that you're going to deliver a great product you need to have great art like those are the things that brought people together just how good the art was and how exciting the marketing was all the community building happened because we already had people attention because they already had that trust that good product was going to come so i think there's a lot of great things that we do as a community team don't get me wrong like i work really hard i meet with people one-on-one -on -one. i i welcome new people on dms i engage with everything that i see like i really try to make the community vibrant and we have rows doing that same thing on discord and our discord is just like a really welcoming and safe place but i mean it's got to be good product like there's got to be something there to get people excited and then you can gather a community so i think i'm shooting myself on the foot here but uh step step zero is have something great have a point of view have a very clear intention of what sort of product you want to deliver and deliver it at the highest quality possible that will draw people in and then you can do community building. Then you can do spaces and retweets and stuff. But all that stuff without great product is just it's noise. And and you know, people people will be like, okay, you know, exciting. We have a we have a game night. We're playing we're playing video games together. But what's what what's what's getting built here? Like what's what what are we what's the brand we're behind here? So with that said, and this is like another question that I definitely wanted to ask, then what do you think that most other teams and and projects are doing wrong. I will preface this by saying that like I think that you guys are just inherently motivated. You guys obviously are capitalized, like you have the money to do so. You guys obviously in and I could imagine this. I'm not on your team, so I don't know, but like I would imagine that when you guys like hop on calls, your calls are like this is what we're working on. This is what's next. This, you know, we want to, you know, drop it in this way. This is what our marketing push is going to yeah. be like, whatever. So, and then it's like a whole thing. And then I feel like there's other teams that they hop on their team calls and they're just like, we, we don't know, like what, you know, how are we going to drop? Like, how are we going to build this community up? Like we have five of these guys that are fudding the discord. Like, you know, we, you know, what, what are, what are we going to do? Like you mentioned product, like, you know, are we going to drop like a, a, another like collection to like rebuild hype? Like, are we going to build out like a whitelist marketplace or whatever? And it's just like, I feel like a lot of them don't have like, whether it's a plan or conviction or like some of them might just be like, they might hop on a call and just be like, dude, like, I don't even want to fucking do this anymore. This is hard. Um, so like, what do you think from like a broad standpoint, like, what do you think that other, other projects are not doing right because it's a lot easier to fail in web three than it is to succeed. I hey man, that's, that's a tough question because I, I don't, I don't mean to tell you what I think other projects do wrong. I'd rather talk about what other projects do, do right and what other brands do right. But I think what I hear from people, cause I talk to the community a lot and I hear from a lot of people that are involved with other brands. They're in other discourse, they're in other projects. I, I feel like, they, I feel like everybody could benefit from listening to their community more and spending more time listening to what they want to see and what they want to and what they want the brand to be and what they want the project to be. I think I think there's a missed opportunity there because there's a lot of really bright people in the space that are collecting NFTs and that are, you know, very active on Twitter that have great ideas that understand the space and that have been here for quite some time, I think. Right now, you got people that have been on Web3 for 12 months, for 18 months, for two years, you know, for longer, and they get they bring you great ideas. And then I think the other element to that is that you got to listen, but you have to listen in a way where you have a viewpoint, you have a point of view, you have a you have a plan. And the things that you execute on need to be they need to make sense. They need to make they need to tell a story. They need, they need to reveal like your point of view. Because if you just listen to the community and you just react to whatever they say, then it, it, it feels like chaos because it is chaos. I think you need to have a vision for where you think things are going to go. So it's a combination of being open to new ideas, but being very clear about contextualizing them within a plan. So, so you got to show people vision right now, especially, especially in a moment where um, there's a lot of doubt about where NFTs may go or, you know, 
where the space may go, you need as a brand and as a project to, to have a clear vision and get people excited about that. And you don't, it doesn't need to be a lot of talking. It can be a lot of doing, but what you do needs to be intentional, I think. So, yeah, I think, I think that's how I would answer that question, but it's a really tough question. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say uh, much more than that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just curious from your perspective, because like for, for what it's worth, right? Like I wake up, I, I deal with NFTs, like this is, this is my life. And even for me, right? Like I've collected a ton of NFTs. I've bought into founders that I thought were legit three months later. They just, you realize that they didn't have a plan. They get tired. They get bored. Like they didn't actually like care to do this, even though pre-mint it's super easy. Cause it's like in this space specifically, a lot of what this is, is it's like, it's, it's, it's backwards. You get money first and then you build stuff after. And I think we're starting to see a lot more that people are definitely a lot more hesitant to be buying into projects these days because the people that are here, they're like seasoned, right? Like they understand that like, cause a year ago, a year and a half ago, it was like, oh, you bought something, you got, then you could stake it. And then there'd be like a secondary collection. And, and, and we've seen like how that's played out. And so I think that like the core group of people that are here have definitely become a lot more skeptical and and just cautious of like what they're buying and like even for me like i i mentioned this in a tweet the other day i said i was like look i can probably count on my hands on on like both hands like how many teams and founders that like i truly believe in and that i would be willing to like buy their project and not just like sit there and stare and like look at the floor and just say like ah like am i hosed now am i screwed and that's just been a thing. Like I I've bought into like a lot of projects that I thought were going to do well. And like, once again, it's not all about like the floor going up, but at the same time, it's like, if I buy into a project and I want to support somebody and the floor goes down, but also like, there's not kind of like what you said, there's like that sense of community and the product isn't there. Then it's just like, well, if I already know like where I'm at in NFTs and I'm not getting anything out of this, then like, how how are other people going to be getting anything out of it as well so yeah like i don't want to like harp too long on that but um i did just want to like toss that out there just because i think that we we've started to see it and like i'm not going to name drop specifically but obviously there have been like some other projects that have been under fire a little bit recently and and we've seen that like a lot on twitter and the way that people are are, are reacting and and i think that people are really starting to like wake up to that yeah, it's sort of a natural progress or major, maturity as well on the space, and I and I think it's it's healthy to be more careful or to be more watchful of of where you, you know, where you buy from and and what you buy and what you get behind and what you invest your time in. I mean, if you can draw a parallel parallel with the venture capital world, I think there's still going to be a lot of investments that venture capitalists make that end up being for the wrong founder or they end up being for the wrong project or end up not delivering. And I think the really good firms are great at picking the best ones, but they're also good at rolling um, in the failures because I think there's also just a lot of times where um, you might invest in something or you might put, you know, as a venture capitalist might put your money behind a really promising founder. And then that might not pan out because a lot of new things don't pan out. Like a lot of new ideas don't, don't pan out. Um, and I think it's just tough because a lot of new people uh, have come into the space with very high hopes and, and, you know, sometimes it hasn't panned out well for them. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's hard learning, you know, like it, I think people are wiser now, but the way that they've had to learn about those things is painful. I know a lot of people have been sort of hurt along the way. I'm, I'm happy that I'm with a team that I really trust uh, in terms of delivering, in terms of profession, professionalism, and in terms of having a clear plan for the future. So um, I'm happy to be able to deliver really high quality stuff for the people that put their trust in, in our brand. Yeah. I enjoy that a lot. Yeah. Hear you on all that for sure. So I think like the next, the next big thing is that what a lot of people have been talking about, I have thoughts on this. Um, and it would be that recently you guys, uh, I say you guys, Azuki, uh, picked up two members of the community that have been putting out really good content. So Elena and, and whale dot swoosh. And I've seen it all over my timeline. So for, for context, like Elena, she posts a lot of like every day, pretty much at night, 
at least it's at night for me she'll like go through and make like a quick little thread of of daily news and stuff so it's like even for me like not gonna lie whenever i'm doing a youtube video or something like that if i'm trying to source info i just go to her twitter and i'll just like go look through i'll be like well she's already sourced all this stuff so um her tweets have been doing really well whale dot swoosh um he's been just posting like general threads like whether it's about just certain things that have happened or blur or trading or anything like that and and both of them have obviously they've they've built brands for themselves and you guys said okay we noticed that this is there's value behind this and you hired both of them on i i believe so i'll let you like you know get deep into that because i don't want to like misspeak but um but I, I personally think that that's like a great move i have seen a lot on twitter where there's been a lot of people that like p threads have become a thing i get that and everybody's like oh like there's so many ways that you can like monetize in web3 create content all this stuff but it's just like yeah. you know i i am one of like the like content creators that's been around for longer than a lot of others like and there's been some people that have quit here and there but like i can like very confidently say that creating content in web3 is not as lucrative in terms of like creating the content and then being able to monetize off that than people would think and so i think that what you guys did was awesome and and i definitely want to hear your thought process behind that and and like how that came about and then like what you think that looks like and how that is going to like help drive like the azuki brand yeah, we created the research in residence role because a core value of Azuki is decentralization. And, and within a decentralized system, funding a public good, it's a really important exercise that everybody in the system needs to kind of put some time towards. So when you look at Gitcoin, for example, these are mechanisms to fund public goods. We consider uh, things like the ERC 721A protocol or the PBT.io, the physical bound token, we consider those open source contributions a way to contribute towards decentralization because instead of keeping the code for ourselves or charging people for using those systems, we release them open source so that anyone can use them. Education, edu educational content is exactly the same thing. It's a public good. If more people are better educated, if more people know everything that's going on, that's better net net for the space, for the whole space that is into Web3 and into NFTs, people make better decisions and they're more aware of what's happening and it's a more fair system that's more distributed. So we wanted to support that educational content without putting it behind some sort of paywall or putting it inside of the Discord and you need to have the token to access it. We just want them to keep doing what they're doing. Like that's the number one thing that they're gonna do. They're gonna keep making the same content, but we're supporting the creation of that content. The second thing that we wanted is to have direct access to them as researchers so that we could ask them to research specific topics and give us an overview. As we grow in a, as an organization, you know, we have to add some people on that don't spend as much time on Discord as we do. They don't spend as much time on Twitter as we do. And, you know, we almost generating like an internal bulletin for them to be updated with everything that's happening with three. So they bring us a ton of intelligence, a ton of research, a lot of like more in, de in detail reports. But the main goal here is that we fund public educational content that everybody can access so that everybody can continue to learn and grow and be aware of everything that's going on. So it was really important for us to do this from like a core value principle of the brand sort of. No, I, I hear that. A lot of people have been talking about, about that. I think it's great. And you mentioned just like being able to support that. Um, I don't think that there have been a lot of other there's two parts of this. I don't think that there's a ton of really good, solid NFT content creators. I personally think that most of the threads, most of the content on Twitter is not good. And I also think that there haven't been a lot of projects specifically that have gone out and done what you did, which is like you go out and, and you like, for lack of a better term, like, you know, you sign on to like have them on your team and not only are they providing the information, not only are they doing what they, they love to do, but they're also representing the brand, which for what it's worth, like your brand is already big, like, we, and I get that. But when you have these accounts on Twitter, it's digital real estate. And when you have like some of the biggest content creators in the space, 
that are a part of your community exclusively and repping your your project like it only makes things better right it only helps like it does it definitely doesn't hurt to get more to get more exposure so yeah um, for sure yeah no I, I think that's that's awesome it's done in a way that matches our principles and our values and i think that's why it made a lot of sense for us because we can explain why we did it and it makes sense with other things that we've done in the past um, but yeah, they're fantastic creators. Uh, they get, they get, they have, get, uh, they have a massive audience. So we're really excited to, to have them on board and, and support what they do. Basically. Yeah. So on that, like we talked about content and, and I think that's like one of the things that, that we wanted to, to go into in this call as well. So, uh, I, I guess like I'll put it up on the screen or I guess I could share my screen, but recently beans like on, on Instagram has, has become a thing. And, and I think that this is one of the areas where a lot of NFT projects fail is in the content area, whether that's, we're talking about hiring people on that it might not be specific content for your brand, but what you guys have done is said, okay, let's go out, let's create like these little animated beans. Let me actually take one second and let me, let me pull this up. So, so now that I have this up, uh, I'll 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 play one of these real quick. Um let me see if if it'll play through my my thing. Okay, yeah. You can hear the the sound of this. <laughs> I love playing beans. It so fun. it's just like a cute little thing and then let's see this one. So here, here's the thing about this is this is content that is being posted onto reels. I think this content would also do good on TikTok, but this is content that if somebody sees it, they're going to think it's cute. They're going to like it. They're going to watch it. They're going to listen to it, right? It's going to show up like directly on their reel, like whatever. And they're going to have no idea that this is an NFT. They're not going to have any idea that this is a, and I mean, uh, a part of a Zuki, right? Because it's just like, they're the beans. Like this is the cute aspect of it. So, um, real quick, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just go back to the normal. So, um, so what, what's like the thought behind all this? Because like, to me, this seems super obvious. If I were going to start an NFT project, I would absolutely be doing this. I think this is super important. So like, what's, what's like the thought and, and all like just everything behind the beans content and and what that's going to look like moving forward. Yeah, we, we made beans as this very lovable and very accessible sort of characters that are very malleable. They can take more of a edgy, funny tone. They can be more cute. They can be more on a kawaii registry. They have a lot of flexibility and we think they have mass appeal. And so when you look at a tool like Instagram and the Reels algorithm, the Reels algorithm is very oriented towards discovery. It shows your content to a lot of new people. And so the Instagram as a tool right now, it's a great opportunity for us to understand beyond people that are into Web3, beyond people that collect beans as an NFT, what else can these characters and these worlds, uh, where, where else can they reach? Like, what is the mass market for them? And what is the messaging that's going to work best? So you can already look at that grid and you can see a lot of different tones. That's because we're doing a lot of A-B testing and we're trying to understand what works best and what is the tone that works best. And I think down the line, I think beans are just this very exciting, cute, approachable set of characters. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of plans and ideas about how to make them reach a mass audience. And I think, you know, I think you're seeing what we're seeing, that you can show this to a friend and you don't need to be talking about like, the blockchain and the and then you know whatever the floor price or whatever it's just like is this cute is this funny like can you relate to this sort of content and so it's a new interesting and very exciting leg for beans and uh you know i'm i've got the beans pfp like i'm a beans maxi all the way so i i can't wait to see uh, how people react to the content because we have a ton of ideas uh for what it could be and i think uh instagram is a great tool to learn discover what really works and then amplify that as much as possible i'm gonna be like very transparent like i love these i also love the pudgy penguins right like i love the what they're doing as well and 
you guys are are absolutely killing it, like both of you guys and i i haven't seen really anybody else take this step this seems to me to be a very obvious step that whether like projects don't see it they don't have the resources uh and whatever it may be but like i can when i look at this right now this account has 2000 followers there's no way that if this continues that beans doesn't continue to just grow to 100,000 followers and then you put out like a little thing where you can sell like t-shirts or like little toys or whatever and all these people are going to buy into these things and then one day it's going to click and they're going to be like this is an nft and like that's just going to happen and so yeah i just i i wanted to bring that up and just show everybody just because like once again if i were going to be starting an nft project this would 100 million percent be part of my content strategy like i would have a lot of this planned like even before i started yeah i think we're lucky to be in a space with a lot of very talented founders and i think obviously luca has shown people uh, a really interesting direction in which to take the characters of his collection and uh, you know when you when you're trying to do a great job you pay attention to what your community wants you pay attention to what your point of view is but you also pay attention to where other people are being successful and uh and what they're doing well so we have a very specific point of view for how we want to run our instagram account and what kind of content we want to make but it's uh it's fantastic to be in in a place where there's really strong founders that have very good ideas and uh you asked me what other teams were doing wrong i think if you asked me what other teams are doing right i would have a lot of praise for pudgy I would have a lot of praise for seals. I would have a lot of praise for use and D gods and obviously Yuga um, clones. I mean, there's just so many great teams out there uh, creating in new and different and interesting ways that it makes it as a creator, as a founder, it makes it a really exciting space to be at because you get to compete and collaborate with really, really strong people. Yeah, no, very well said. Yeah, so with all that, I mean, I, I enjoyed like all of that. I think that there's a ton of, of good content, like a lot of good context as well within like everything that we spoke about. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention uh, before we end up hopping off? Yeah, I just think uh, for everybody watching this that is part of the music community and it's part of the Beans community and, and Bobu community, I think the support that you've given us as a team throughout uh, this year, it's amazing. I think that level of trust is amazing. And uh, you think, um, about how we think about things we really want to deliver for all of you we want to make sure that you're really proud to be part of this brand but i think we're also just trying to speak to more people and connect with more people that maybe have a preconception of what our brand is or what our founders are you know they have these things that have uh been sort of spread as um, almost like rumors and you know we we want to show everybody that we're here to stay in the, in the web3 space we're here to build for people we're here to open source things and to share things with the space and so I also just want to say that uh, it's really cool to come and do a video with you. I've, I've, I've loved your content and uh, I love this interview. I thought we got really into things. Uh, I, I really appreciate the sort of things that you do for your community and, and what you deliver. So thanks for having me on. Really, really great time. Yeah, I appreciate it a ton. Obviously, you're a busy guy. You're working, building one of the biggest projects in the NFT space. So for you to take the time to to chat with me and, and to make this content, it means a lot. So. I will go ahead and I'll put like the Instagram, the Twitter for everything for Azuki. For some reason, like you're not following this stuff. Definitely check out the Instagram if you haven't, just because I think that it's like, it's really cool to look at. And I think that we're going to start seeing a lot of like really good content from not only Beans, but Pudgy's already kind of been doing it. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. Like, comment, let me know how you liked it. Um, show support to Dem and the Azuki community. And I will see you guys in the next video.